why hello youtube it's bail mage again this will be our last video before the league launch where i've finally made some decisions of how i'm going to handle my league start so this is not a guide there is already a poison srs guide that we spent much much time on however there are some things to do that are slightly different so i'm going to be experimenting specifically these two nodes are new. If you are not familiar with the Poison SRS guide or how we're doing it this league, this bit's going to be a little questionable to you. You might want to skip to the Atlas part. But if you know what's going on with Poison SRS, you'll know there's been a lot of talk about Bone Barrier and the Instant Leech and uh, whether or not we should be using those. And right now, my build guide looks like this, which will be very, very good. We've played it before. We know it's got more damage. We know it's going to be great. What I'm thinking of trying, and this could be questionable, is that I am going to get Commander of Darkness from Normal, then Mindless Aggression from Cruel, and then Unnatural Strength from Merciless Lab. Uh, so, that, so that two things. One, so that I can immediately be the Hybrid Chaos instead of having to look for, um, instead of having to look for Uber Lab first, because I, I, I well, I just want to test it as quick as I possibly can. And two, because I'm thinking about skipping Mistress of Sacrifice entirely to get Bone Barrier for my last Ascendancy. Now, you could make an argument that Mistress of Sacrifice is more important than Commander of Darkness, and you could do it that way instead. I've decided to go with Commander of Darkness because I think that the... Just the resistances alone that it offer on like day one of a league that's like three suffixes that's 90 resistance um honestly that's super super helpful on day one and i don't want to give that up however it also means we end up way 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 over block cap because we're going to take glancing blow which means i'm probably not going to take this top block wheel here at all and i might not even take this block wheel just glancing blow on its own we seem to have enough block with just this node and the tempest shield um if i can find one percent block chance somewhere uh then that'll be enough so that'll save me a lot of passives however i'll only be glancing blow block capped so we'll be taking a bunch of damage doing that a bunch of extra damage but the idea is the leech from this node should be more than enough recovery to make up for that and then some plus we get that extra 10 percent physical damage reduction plus we get that 40 percent maximum life as extra energy shield which is also going to let me feel a lot more comfortable about bringing an animate guardian into my setup way earlier than i have before so these are experiments. The rest of the tree is going to stay the same. The rest of my progression is going to stay the same. The way I level it is going to stay the same. I'm just changing the ascendancy orders and doing things a little bit different than I have in the guide because it's an experiment. If you want to see how that experiment goes as you're leveling your own and you're perhaps behind me, uh, you can very easily come over to the Twitch or the YouTube stream and come and ask how it's going. And if it's going fantastic, maybe you'll want to adjust yours accordingly so next step what am i going to do for an atlas tree i have not decided what i'm permanently going to farm yet though i am leaning into uh this thing ultimatum but i may also go with uh expedition or breach those are all on my list however after watching every every bit of content that I could possibly find and looking at it as much as possible, this is what I've decided my progression tree is going to look like. I don't know if it's for sure the best, but it's what I'm going with. So, uh, a lot of the influence for changing this over to a little bit more mob-oriented Atlas tree um, comes from watching Havoc's video. If anyone hasn't seen that, it was quite good. It was quite informative. Uh, he did some test runs about how we might be able to do progression next league and it seemed pretty good so the first few points i'm taking are going to be jun right away right away i'm going to take these this is a 40 percent chance for jun almost half of my maps will have jun 
which means I will get a bunch of crafts and a bunch of unveils. Not only is unveil gear overall usually pretty good, there's usually room to craft a mod on it and you get to unveil a, a mod on it, which is almost always good, which gives you two mods right off the bat. So you're only looking for an item to drop with one or two good mods already on it on day one and you end up having a pretty decent item. It also gets you all the crafts unlocked. So we're going to do that right away. I'm sick of not having crafts unlocked. And then my plan is to come up here, straight down here to these nodes, which will all be 2% Curax, and grab that wheel first, interestingly enough. Then come up here, go this side, which is not a side we usually take. This is the notable we would want normally. But with all of these connected Curac nodes becoming 2%ers instead of 1%ers, I would rather go this way. So when it comes through there, grab all of those Curac nodes, right? Then I'm going to come through here, grab those plus ones and this other Curac wheel, then grab this plus one. Then I'm going to rapidly start adding mobs into my map. Oh, we might also take these plus ones here. I don't know when I'll fit those in. We might also take them there as we're getting the other plus ones. Then we're going to rapidly start adding mobs into our map. So I'm going to start with add a shrine, add a harbinger, and then add a box. And then I'm going to come up here, buff my shrines, buff my harbingers, buff my harbingers. I'm not going to bother buffing the boxes. I don't think they're going to be worth it. And then at that point, I'm at 74. At this point, I will decide, is the league mechanic getting too difficult because I can make it easier here if I want to? Or do I want to invest more into it right now? Is it maybe easy enough that I'm having a great time and I want it to be more rewarding and I could go that way? Or I might just ignore it during progression. So other than that, what I'm thinking at this stage is that I will just start filling out every connected node that I can get from then on because we get to abandon this tree when we're done with progression we get to abandon this tree swap to another one and just pick something completely new without regrets so this is the tree that I've decided to go with I do not know if it's the best I've got it and I will share it with you but I have no idea if this is going to be the best or not um, the one thing left up in the air for me here is this scarab wheel is going to be a sort of at will thing during day one. If I start finding out that I'm dropping in just my average Alcan Goad yellow maps, that I'm dropping two or three scarabs a map, I'm going to take this node and get more scarabs and I'm just going to start rapidly using scarabs on my maps as well. If I find myself in yellow maps getting a scarab every second map, I'm not, I'm probably not going to take it, right? Like that's not enough to warrant me spending some points right now. That'll be good later. But if there's a lot early, I will also take this because it's a lot of extra scarabs. Otherwise, that is, there's also an option to take this wheel that I'm right next to, not because I care about Katarina, but because I care a lot about getting all my crafts and also getting pretty decent items from just unveiling things. So this whole wheel is actually pretty good for that because we've got 15% chance to drop additional veiled items. And then here, 200% more likely to offer bargain for items. Drop 200% more items when bargained for items. A little bit extra spawn chance. Another 15% chance to drop more veiled items. And then more chance to be accompanied by leader. Leaders also drop additional veiled items. So I wouldn't bother fully specking into this or looking anywhere else for any of the other wheels. They're all too far away. But for me personally, I'm giving some serious consideration to this, depending on how many unveiled pieces I have by then. But yeah, that's the plan. That's my day one plan. I hope everybody has a fantastic day one. That is all I have. And I will see everybody after the Necropolis League starts. Goodbye.